appreciate that. Um, I'm going to keep this puppy rolling. We're going to our open stage. But this gentleman, uh, if Alan Scott, who was here earlier, would like a, a, a fixture at, at the old uh, Word Up location, uh, this gentleman's been a fixture here, and we're really glad he's here. Uh, and, and, and given the, the cancellation, you, you got 10, man. Have fun. Eugene Rosenberg. Woo! Hey, uh, I'm sorry. I took a, a call when I missed that last impression, but I got a paid writing gig, which is oh, like good. the first one I've had in, in a while. But, you know, professional authors, you got to hang in there. So as usual, I have uh, two stories. Both pretty miserable. <laughs> Both about a relationship that is approaching its close. Um, one takes place in New York. One takes place in Europe. One's called Lost in the Snow. The other's called Excess Baggage. <laughs> Any preference? Excess Baggage. Yeah. Excess Baggage. Okay, Excess Baggage. <clears throat> So we had attempted reconciliation, and this was the last day of it. You know, we were we had tried to make up. We had tried to make up in Paris. We had tried to make up in Amsterdam. We had tried to make up in Prague. We tried to reconcile on the promenade, at the gallery, and in the hotel, and. It availed nothing. We found ourselves waking up on that last morning, and as the sun cracked the sky after a sleepless night, all the futility of this entire voyage and attempt at reconnecting was simply laid bare before us. So there wasn't a whole lot to say that morning. We dressed and we packed in silence, checked out of the hotel early so eager to get on that bus to take us back from Prague to Paris, which is quite a long ride. We took a taxi to the station, and we still had time to kill, but we just couldn't wait to get on that bus. I remember we went to an internet cafe to kill the hour or whatever we had until we boarded the bus. I uh, checked my flight status. She was emailing whatever guy she had back in New York. At the beginning of the trip, I'd asked if I could come back to the city. She had been ambivalent. I didn't ask again, and uh, by the time uh, we pulled out of uh, the Prague bus station, there didn't seem a reason to bridge the subject again. I don't know if you've ever been on a long bus ride with someone you're breaking up with. <laughs> <laughs> it is not the most comfortable thing, but it's not like you can sit somewhere else. It's not like <laughs> You, you, I'm going to sit in the front, you sit in the front, you can't really do that. You just kind of sit next to each other awkwardly. I, I think she listened to her her music on her disc man and, and flipped through whatever book she was reading, and I just kind of stared out at the Audubon, watching the windows fog up and unfog, and just kind of trying to read all the signs, because I knew the smattering of French. I remember the the bus, it, we had to travel all day, and by the time the, the sun went down, uh, we were we were crossing from Germany into France, which you then still have a long distance going to Paris. But uh, we stopped at a, a gas station, and I had a, a cigarette and a short conversation in French with a, a traveler who's heading east, and we were heading west. And I, I my ability with the language had devolved so much at that point that all I and the sleep deprivation from being on the bus and the sleepless nights before. Uh, I could barely get past greetings and destination questions with this person. And as I'm trying to get this communication to this guy in French, I'm realizing I probably could be having the exact same conversation with her. That's really all we had left to say was, okay, so yeah. where are you going? <laughs> she was going back to New York and I was going back to Asia. We uh, pulled into Paris just as it was dawning and uh, our bus, uh, the bus station was on the east end of town, and, and we had to get to Garden Nord, which is sort of in the north section. So we took a, we took the subway, the metro, and uh, we pulled into Garden Nord, and I thought we'd have one last meal at the cafe, because I had flight in six hours, and hers weren't 12. And uh, I had the, uh, you know, the jambon sandwich, whatever <laughs> it was. 
And uh, I threw the rest of the euros down, said, you know, you're staying a little bit longer. And I didn't really see the point in checking into a hotel, even if she wanted to kill some time indoors and was cold in January. I didn't even want to breach the subject of possibly being in another hotel with her. In fact, I had hoped that that last meal at that cafe would kind of be the closing of our of our time in Europe together. But uh, she rose with me and she picked up the euros that I had thrown onto the ground, onto the table, and we walked out to the plaza in front of the station. And I remember there was a beggar uh, that we walked by, and she just kind of casually tossed the rest of my euros into his box which I thought was totally symbolic. <laughs> I mean, I was giving her the last of what I had, and she was throwing it away, which made perfect sense if you needed me to spell that out completely. But when we got to Garden Ord. I had bought a round-trip ticket from Charles de Gaulle to Garden Ord and back for my return flight, because I knew I'd be returning on some flight. And at the original, at the beginning of the trip, I, you know, I had lost my job in Taiwan, and I had hoped that I'd be flying off to New York. I could just change my flight around or something like that. So I knew I'd go back to Charles de Gaulle at some point. I wasn't going to move into Paris. It's as attractive an option as that might be. Uh, it wasn't something I was going to do quite on impulse. But also, I still had all my stuff back in Taiwan. Anyway, we went to Garden Ord, and, and uh, we were actually holding hands at that point, because I think we both knew it was near the end. And when the train pulled in, she started to cry. And, and I remember when the, the gust from the train pulling into the station kind of ripped the tears out of her eyes onto the platform, and I thought, this is so cliche, and it would be so romantic. And in a sense, it still was, even though it was clearly the end of something. And to just fulfill the cliche, you know, I got on the train and I looked out at the window at her, and she looked at me through the window, and. I didn't go so far as to put my hand on the glass, uh -huh. but you know, I we kept eye contact until I pulled into the uh, until I pulled into the uh, the north uh, exit of the station, the tunnel up to Charles de Gaulle, which is a, a very short trip. It's, 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 uh, airport just outside of the city. When I got there, I, I checked in. And they told me I had excess baggage, which mm -hmm. is the title of the story, and. Uh, Apparently, I was 10 kilos overweight because she had brought with me some of my junk from New York. Obviously, she was not ready for me to return. Uh, so she had brought some junk with me, some of my junk, and, and gave it to me on the trip. And I would carry it with me from Paris to Amsterdam to Prague, back to Paris, up to Garden Orange, up to Charles de Gaulle. And there I was with like a 10, 15 kilos of extra garbage. And they were like, uh, this is going to be 20... 20 euros per extra kilo. And I'd already given away the last of my euros. And I thought, uh, you know, even if I had the money, my stupid t-shirts and shoes are not worth, you know, uh, 20 bucks a kilo. So I began throwing things away and, and, and hopefully someone at Charles de Gaulle came into a nice cache of gently used <laughs> uh, shoes and t-shirts and various and sundry things that I've been carrying around with me for years and years apparently during our relationship. And uh, it wasn't until I I checked into my airplane and sat down that I realized the obviousness of that symbol. I had uh, disposed of some excess baggage. I didn't look out on that flight, though. I uh, sat next to a Japanese girl who uh, I convinced to stay at the same hostel as me in Hong Kong. And uh, for the next two days, we were inseparable um, until my uh, flight came up and uh, we uh, parted ways at HKG. There were no tears when uh, I parted with her. But uh, I don't remember her name anyway. Oh. Eugene Rodenberg. Yeah!